SnowRunner Phase 6 main causing you pain? Well here are the top 10 best trucks of the vanilla variety to make life easier. SnowRunner Phase 6 Hall & Hustle is the second of the Year 2 Pass DLCs, following on from Phase 5 Build and Dispatch taking place in Maine of the US, where roads appear to be a rare luxury, and somebody left the tap on, the new region is by no means a walk in the park. Not that anyone who has beaten a Mandra and a Moor will be phased by these two new maps, the Lowland and Yellow Rock National Forest, except for some fiddly tree moments and slow moving snow and mud in places, Maine is more forgiving and generally more satisfying to drive around. The biggest problem is that when you start the map there is no fully operational garage. You have to complete various tasks to repair the refuel, repair and customization functionality. Or throw realism to the wind and jump to a garage in another map to cheat a bit. So what are the top 10 best trucks for Phase 6 Maine in SnowRunner and why? Allow me, Mr. A Tribe Called Cars, to help. Bear in mind I have chosen only vanilla trucks for this, however there are various mod truck lists on the channel if those are your jam and scone with cream. Delicious. Nothing to do with that famous Bob Marley endorsed plant, the TUZ420 Tartarin continues to be useful in Phase 6 Main. Its mud conquering excellence makes it good for scouting watchtowers, while its small size keeps those annoyingly unbreakable and flexible trees from ruining your day. The downside of the TUZ420 Tartarin of course is that it is bad in deep water, so adjust your routes accordingly or you will be swimming with the fishes. Now by now you should be familiar with the Azov 73210, this Russian 8-wheeler, complete with always-on AWD and diff-lock and rear steering, is one of SnowRunner's best trucks. Once in fifth gear, it can cruise through mud, snow and water better than most. Chuck on active suspension and you can make it less prone to nose floor moments. On the flip side, that lower center of gravity, coupled with slow to moderate speeds, helps with stability. With almost all add-ons at its disposal, there is very little of main that the 64131's sibling cannot do. Now I always liked the ANK MK38, particularly in the Yukon region. And now that Phase 6 brought with it the MK38 civilian version, complete with four add-ons instead of the original sideboard bed, it makes a whole lot more sense to use, especially as it is great off-road and can cover ground fast. Where the ANK MK38 struggles is over long distances, unless you bring support or have laid out a few fuel trailers across the map. That 200 litre capacity is not much, and when under strain, its engines are thirsty. At least it appears less tippy than it used to be, thanks to some weight adjustment. Not since the early days of SnowRunner, when I was tackling Alaska for the first time, have I bothered using the Derry Longhorn 4520. I was drawn to its styling, but its performance was mediocre at best. Not what you want in a game that can be hard as nails. However, with Phase 6 main comes a new gutsier engine. With that extra oomph, I thought I would give it another chance, and turns out it works fairly nicely at pulling heavy stuff through the boggy terrain. Slap it into low and the diff lock and AWD can save the day, albeit slowly. It's not a top tier truck, that is for sure, but it is satisfying to drive and that rear steering can be useful for longer roads on corner ridden stretches of main countryside. And now we come to a cat with huge claws, at least when it comes to recovery and rescue missions. Yes, you can do logging too with the Cat 745C and an Alaska, but it is that monstrous off-road performance that makes it such a winner in every map. Slap on that beefy fuel carrier add-on, and the 745C is a great support truck in Maine that you can leave around the deadly swamp areas, just in case other trucks bite off more than they can chew. Fuel scarcity early on in Maine, and the fact the 745C is very hard to tip, also make it a no-brainer. Best of all, there are far fewer logs to get that articulated body stuck on. Now the DAN 96320 is an underrated beast, and one of my preferred heavy trucks. What it lacks in fast steering and agility, 
It more than makes up for with raw power, AWD and diff lock always on, and great stability. Hence, it is a good crane truck, although I would say the 73210 is better. Speaking of the 73210, the DAN96320 shares the active suspension upgrade for added ground clearance. It also has a reasonable amount of add-ons to perform most tasks. Just remember to turn the beacons on for added off-road potency. Yet another staple of SnowRunner since its arrival, the International Paystar 5600TS comes with all the trimmings to work in Maine. Logging add-ons, ramped towing platform for vehicles, long flatbeds for extra cargo capacity, and a whole lot more. The fact it is long, has 10 wheels, and lets you upgrade to engageable all-wheel drive and diff lock ensures you will rarely get stuck, unless you've been overdoing it at the Irish pub. Just watch out for tippy shenanigans, especially when carrying cargo. It has been a rocky time for Joe Exotic since the first season of the Netflix show The Tiger King. The Tiger King, meanwhile, has continued to enjoy a relatively trouble-free life in SnowRunner, thanks to strong off-roading, numerous add-ons, and faster performance at the expense of fuel efficiency. Personally, I think the Tiger Balloon tires work better in Phase 6 main, as the extra stability can be a big plus on those bumpy mud trails. Its generally higher top speed also works nicely in a phase with two large maps. Now, you could also use the Tega 6455B, as it is not that different, save for a bit less utility. However, it is locked behind a number of tasks from the dusty woodwork contracts, so it will take some effort to unlock. In spite of the Verongrad losing out on extra logging utility, the trusty Veron AE4380 does not. Hello, medium and short logging add-ons. That and the fact it can do almost anything in reliable fashion makes it a winner in main. The AE4380 does suffer from more fiddly steering than some of its competitors, but that is partly emphasized by the fact it can really shift especially with the biggest tyres, the best engine, and the best paint job in SnowRunner. Psychedelic man. Now my next choice is probably the worst choice ever for scouting and driving into a forest, but its 63 inch tyres, 4 slot bed, powerful top engine, and the more recent AWD upgrade work well in mains more open areas. The lack of trailers alone is worth it, not just because of the reduced hassle and lower costs, but also because the trailer store function of the garage in Maine is initially unavailable, and that four slots is usually sufficient for each item type. It does require some care to avoid tipping over, especially with Maine's sometimes uneven surfaces that are not always the easiest to spot. Tackle stuff straight on whenever you can though, and the twin steer will do you proud. And that is it for my top 10 best trucks in SnowRunner Phase 6 main video. If you found it useful, give it a like, thumbs up, and maybe even buy me a coffee. It all helps the tribe machine keep running. Any trucks I missed, use the comments to let me know. Take care, homescones. Bye.